Good morning, everyone. My name is Noor. Uh, I'm a director of technical solutions at Record a Future. And uh, today we're going to be talking about info stealers, uh, how to bypass multi factor authentication, and uh, a modern solution to such a threat. So, quick poll of the room. Uh, has anyone deployed or used currently um, multi factor authentication within the organization? Yeah, okay, good. All right. Good audience. Uh, does anyone use a privileged access management solution at all? Okay, something like an Okta, something like that. Okay, good. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, simulate a threat actor. We're going to go and buy some uh, credentials, uh, install some cookies, and then hopefully uh, bypass some multi factor authentication and show how that can be done. And then we're going to talk about how we can adapt to such a new threat. So uh, join me on this journey down into the dark web, if you will. All right, so first of all, why, why are we even bothering talking about this uh, topic? So I think it's quite interesting that uh, according to the last uh, breach report, credentials and phishing are still some of the two highest uh, initial access vectors for any threat actor. If you ask any threat actor nowadays, they're not really fussed with creating sophisticated malware because why would they? Uh, if they can get credentials, or use phishing to get credentials, that's half the job done for you. And it's funny that the first two are so related because phishing is a credential harvesting activity or can be one. So really the first two, in my mind, uh, achieve the same effect, uh, which is essentially grab some credentials and then easily gain access to your victim's uh, network. It's very, very simple. Colonial Pipeline took down half the east coast of the US, leak credential. Cisco's breach, compromised VPN credential. It was too easy for the threat actor to get in. So uh, what is an info stealer? An info stealer is a piece of malware that uh, uh, its singular job is to steal credentials and cookies from the target machine. Now, you might be wondering why on earth would I download an info stealer? Uh, a lot of them are based off of um, unlicensed software. So you might think you're downloading MSI or MetaTrader uh, or a classic example is CC Cleaner. Uh, for your Mac or for your machine, uh, what you think is that you're downloading is actually an info stealer malware. Uh, and here on the chart, you can see all the different executable names. So these are just names of the executable on the machine, uh, which were actually just info stealers. So some of the names, uh, you know, setup.exe, ccleaner, crackkey.exe. So, you know, all these uh, unlicensed uh, pieces of software are actually just info stealers. So it's very easy to uh, fool a child, for example, on a public machine at home, uh, or even adults uh, using that same machine. Everyone seems to be downloading InfoStealer malware. So now, where does that end up? So the InfoStealer malware uh, scrapes all the information from that person's machine and then sends it off to what's called a dark web market. Uh, two very famous ones are the ones on the screen right now. So Genesis Store on the top is very famous, very easy to use. And uh, Russian market, it's, that's what it's called, um, uh, is also very, very popular amongst threat actors. So here you can buy one person's identity. They're called a bot. So let's say if my identity was on the market, I would just be one bot. And that bot would include my logins to things like uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, my recorded future logins, maybe, hopefully not. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, you know, what, um, uh, any uh, cloud apps that I might be using. So my whole bundle of identities and logins is included in that one bot. So when you purchase that bot, you purchase the person's entire identity, including their cookies, uh, their saved logins, and, and so on and so forth. So what a threat actor then does is um, grabs those cookies. So here, this is Google Chrome's developer tools. It's very easy to use. You can uh, load up cookies quite simply. And then what the threat actor does is, is simply take all 3,000 cookies that this individual has, uh, downloads them, uh, and then can load them into a, um, uh, a browser plugin that the, that the market actually has, which makes it really, really easy to use. You can load up that um, plugin, and then once, that, once you've imported the, the cookies into that plugin, you are essentially browsing as if you are that individual. It's, it's really, really easy to do. It's actually freakishly easy to do. Uh, and then once you've loaded those cookies in, you can then select the bot that you've purchased. So this person has purchased a number of different bots. And then you can just select the one that you need and then start browsing as you are that person. You can buy a person's entire identity for about $8, depending on the, on the person, depending how interesting they are and then their logins. Uh, but yeah, 8 to $10, maybe 15 if they're really special. Uh, but uh, it's very, very simple. You load them in, you select the cookie batch that you want, 
the uh, browser you're going to use, and then you import and then you're good to go. So, uh, but nor I use an antivirus engine and that antivirus engine will pick up on that info stealer on the machine. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. That's the whole point of cybersecurity is that layers are meant to fail, like a bulletproof vest. You know, not every layer catches the bullet. Your antivirus engine might not ca catch that, that info stealer malware. So if you take a look here, uh, we've actually charted all of the different antivirus engines that were being used on a machine infected by an info stealer. And you can see a who's who on here. I mean, it's not, to, it's not to slam any of these antivirus providers. They're fantastic at what they do, but they can't be expected to, to, to be this uh, silver bullet that's going to catch everything. Sometimes they're just not going to without reading out some names, but there are some very popular antivirus engines here on the screen. The, and InfoStealer is actually surprisingly sophisticated. Um, some of the ones we encounter are very well written. Uh, they've got AV, uh, evasion techniques. You know, these guys know what they're doing. There's a lot of money in this uh, InfoStealer economy. And so that uh, drives sophisticated development for these InfoStealer tools. You know, the more sophisticated the tool, the more credentials you're going to harvest, the more money you're going to make on the market. It's sort of a positive feedback loop. So, uh, let's talk about a real-world example that happened to Uber. So Uber were famously breached last year, uh, and the, uh, the initial access vector was actually um, a, pur a purchase credential off the dark web. That's all it was. So attacker um, sends out a malicious link, uh, delivers a payload of, of InfoStealer down to a person's uh, machine. That, mach that InfoStealer then scrapes all the credentials, just like we talked about. Uh, they're then bought on a dark web market for some money which is uh, the credential exchange. Now, this is the interesting part. So the, the threat actor that purchased the credentials uh, couldn't actually get past the multi-factor authentication. So what they did was they WhatsApped the Uber employee claiming to be from Uber's IT team, asking them to approve the multi-factor authentication request that was coming in. And then they used a technique called, well, it's not a technique, it's just human, human nature. It's called uh, multi-factor authentication fatigue, is where you just hammer the person constantly, asking them to approve the request until they finally want you to go away and they, and they, and they approve the request for you. So it's just a very fancy way of, of saying, you know, they just bugger the person over and over and over again until they approve the, the, the request. And this is actually what happened. So then the person got into the Uber intranet, they then performed some privileged access management, they happened to find a, a, a user with an admin login to their privileged access management. It was, uh, I think it was psychotic. And then from there, they just went off into everywhere. And then the threat actor actually posted on a Slack channel in Uber and said, you know, Uber's been breached. Hi, my name is XYZ. Uh, uh, Uber doesn't pay its drivers enough or something ridiculous like that. So uh, they actually posted on the Slack channel. Real life example, huge company, very, very easy to do. The threat actor that did this was 18 years old uh, and was part of a, a very sophisticated gang called Lapsus Group. Sophisticated is, is a stretch, but yeah. Very young, very easy to do, all stemmed from a stolen credential bought online. So when you think about uh, cybersecurity, it's, all, it's a game of, of risk. So you think about the likelihood of something occurring to you and the impact it's going to have on your, on your network, on your customers, on your environment, on your brand, on your uh, regulatory compliance. You have to think of all of those things. So I feel like sometimes we're very fixated on the, uh, the very rare occurrence. You know, like let's say an APT group from Russia targets my network and uh, conducts some very sophisticated uh, campaign against me. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, what if I got struck by lightning? That would be devastating to me, but it's not very likely to occur. The, 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 the statistical likelihood of that occurring is very low. The same can be said for, for cybersecurity. I feel like sometimes uh, we focus on the things that are very unlikely to occur to us when there are so many other low-hanging fruit hanging around there that a threat actor can take advantage of. And so it's really about profiling, the likelihood of something occurring and the risk it's going to have. And this is a classic, sorry, the impact it's going to have. And this is a classic example of one of those things that has a very high likelihood of, a, of occurrence um, and a very high impact. Both of those things are, are true. So just think about the, the risk tolerance uh, for that. So recommendations. Uh, obviously, having uh, intelligence about identities is, is absolutely crucial. It can help you be very, very proactive when it comes to this sort of uh, threat actor technique, which is evolving. Uh, sorry, sorry how, how long do I have left? About three minutes. Three minutes, okay, cool. Right. 
Uh, you can use authentication apps uh, like Okta. Okta is brilliant. I think it's a, it's a very good tool. Um, uh, but yeah, authentication apps are absolutely crucial. Uh, use hard keys wherever you can and employee awareness. But really, the intelligence helps you get to the, to the root cause of the issue rather than relying on uh, other layers in the bulletproof vest to catch things. You know, you start early, don't get shot, and then you don't need a bulletproof vest is, is the way I like to put it. Uh, so, takeaways. Info stealers are uh, very popular um, at stealing fingerprints and cookies. Uh, there are many different ways of, of bypassing multi-factor authentication, which we haven't even got into yet today. Um, but there are so many different ones. So, while multi-factor authentication is essential, it should be deployed absolutely, but it's not the silver bullet that I think we're starting to rely on it as being. Um, and so, it needs to be addressed accordingly. Make sure you have a sufficient account takeover strategy in place. So what if someone were to take over an account in your environment? What do you do? What's the playbook? What's the automation? Uh, Toby mentioned it in, in Swimlane's uh, presentation. How do you automate the, the, the reaction to that? And then, of course, having authentication apps and awareness and training. Think about the kind of multi-factor authentication you're using in your organization. Uh, have you experienced any examples of bypass of multi-factor? How would you react to identity compromise? Uh, are you monitoring the latest techniques and tactics and procedures that a threat actor is using? Do you have that intelligence in-house? Are you consuming it proactively and responding proactively? Um, and do you have insight into uh, forums and invite-only sites that uh, encourage this sort of behavior? Selling credentials, discussing threats. You know, threat actors are very busy, very active on, on communities. So that's sort of the key takeaways. And that is it. So we are Record the Future. Uh, please come to our booth next door. We're, we're, we're very much uh, present. Uh, we have an excellent podcast called Click Here. It's actually the number two uh, tech podcast uh, on the Apple Store, which is great. And uh, we have a news site called The Record, where you can get breaking news on cyber attacks and stories. That's it.